Finally, SpaceX Booster 7, our hero, is back and better than ever with some robustness. Upgraded to gear up for 33 engine static fire tests this week. So what has SpaceX team done to upgrade on the B7 over the past month? Let's talk about it today in this episode of Alpha Tech. Until now, Boosters 7 and Ship 24 continue to be cited as the pairing that will conduct the orbital test flight, with Musk citing that this latest schedule is hopeful for the first orbital flight of Starship as soon as next month. We have a real shot at a late February or March launch attempt appears highly likely, Musk wrote. Schedule clarity will be gained via the return of the Booster 7 on last Sunday from its time back at the Mega Bay High Bay 2 after it was transported away from its perch on the orbital launch mount in December. With road closures posted for this week, we hope a big test is coming soon. Booster 7 alone completed more than 24 distinct tests, including six static fires between early April and late November. Now back to the main topic, let's see what's new on B7 after the latest Reborn. Firstly, have you noticed that its appearance has become more attractive? Well, Booster 7 is now surprisingly shiny. Doesn't look like there's any missing tiles now. Now, SpaceX's futuristic Starship interplanetary craft may embody the golden age of sci-fi in more ways than one. In addition to theoretically taking passengers from planet to planet, it may sport a shiny stainless steel skin, makes it look like the pulp covers of old. This is a special full hardness steel alloy mentioned as being among the 300 series of high strength heat resistant alloys, not the plentiful pliable stuff we all have in our kitchens and buildings. Musk also even mentioned another super alloy called SX500 that SpaceX metallurgists have been developing for use in the Raptor engine that'll power the vehicle. Secondly, full engine shields. One month ago, B7 had 20 missing panels for each of its outer Raptor engine. That engine shielding looks great now. Any replacements would need to be modified to ensure that the ad hoc system installed to prevent the conditions that led to Booster 7's first explosion from recurring can still be used for future static tests. But honestly, it's unclear why SpaceX would need to reinstall those panels now for Booster 7's upcoming 33-engine static fire and a full-stack wet dress rehearsal when they weren't needed for the 11 and 14 static fires and a dozen other fire-free tests. Besides B7, we also noticed some great upgrades of OLM over the month. As one of the corrective actions, a water deluge flooding system is installed on the orbital launch mount that would suppress the fire and engine sound at the time of the static fire test and actual launches. Next, it should be mentioned that after the successful 14-engine static fire test of Booster 7 on November 14th, SpaceX had to repair the launch pad in order to be ready for its next round of tests. One notable repair involved replacing concrete directly under the OLM. At that time, SpaceX also quickly installed the shielding of one of the OLM legs, which houses a multitude of pipes and wires running up into the mount itself. Once the necessary repairs were completed, SpaceX ignited 11 engines on B7 for approximately 13 seconds on November 29th, marking the longest duration firing of the massive booster so far. Sadly, Stage 0 continued to suffer a lot of damage during engine testing. As a result, after Super Heavy B7 had been removed from the OLM and headed back to the factory for the sixth time this year, there's a lot of work on and underneath the OLM afterward. Cranes, lifts, concrete pumping, all rushing to get ready for the 33-engine static fire, as well as Starship's first orbital flight. The OLM itself is also continuing to receive more shielding around the propellant transfer lines that run up one of the legs, and cladding continues to be added near the base of the launch tower. These claddings will eventually go up to protect the pipes, electronics, and mechanics of the launch tower during testing, as SpaceX ramps up the number of engines being tested on the pad. Last week, OLM also successfully completed 5,000 ton simulating Starship test. After all, we hope that the latest must schedule will come true. Besides Starbase, Florida Starship pad construction is also ramping up with the arrival of a chopsticks carriage. The next piece of SpaceX's growing Starship infrastructure at Kennedy Space Center arrived at Launch Complex 39A on Friday. A carriage apparatus for the Starship pad's mechanized chopstick arm system rolled to the complex for installation on the launch pad tower. 
The structure is similar but not identical to the system used at SpaceX's Starship launch site in South Texas called Starbase. The chopsticks will be used in attempts to catch these huge reusable first stage of the Starship mega rocket called the Super Heavy Booster as it comes back to Earth for landing after each launch. The robotic arms are also handy during stacking of the Starship vehicle on top of Super Heavy Booster for testing and launch operation. Starship will be the tallest and most powerful rocket ever to fly, standing nearly 400 feet tall with 33 methane-fueled engines, generating 17 million pounds of thrust at full throttle. The transfer of the carriage Friday morning was the first significant visible sign of progress at the Starship launch site in Florida since SpaceX capped off assembly of the tower at Pad 39A in September. Over the summer, SpaceX transported eight tower segments one by one from the Roberts Road staging site at Kennedy to Pad 39A, then lifted each section onto the tower with a giant crane. Since then, work at the site has been focused on outfitting systems within the perimeter of the sprawling seaside launch complex, rather than bringing in major new hardware elements. Aside from the new tower and the chopstick arm system, SpaceX is installing new ground storage tanks for propellants, a water deluge sound suppression system, and a circular launch mount that the Super Heavy Booster will sit on before liftoff. Pedestals for the launch mount are in place at Pad 39A, but SpaceX has not moved the mount itself over to the launch pad from its off-site fabrication facility. While SpaceX readies for the first Starship orbital flight test from the Starbase complex in South Texas, work at Kennedy Space Center is focused on building an operational launch base for future Starship missions, including flights to the moon for NASA's Artemis lunar program. Eventually, SpaceX plans to construct a factory at Kennedy for Super Heavy Boosters and Starship vehicles, which are currently exclusively built in Texas. The work to prepare for future Starship launches is occurring amid a busy cadence of launches of SpaceX Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets at the Florida spaceport. Starship launch site sits just 1,000 feet or 300 meters from the Falcon launch pad at Launch Complex 39A. And that about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comment section down below because your support motivates us to create more quality video. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.